guys, hey guys, I'm Chris Kaler. No, <laughs> I'm Chris Kaler. <laughs> and I'm Axel from Cujan Cosplay. And today we are watching Breaking Bad. We're back at it again at season three, episode seven. One minute. I'm excited for this episode, guys. <laughs> I'm so excited, and you know why. You don't know why, but you'll find out soon enough. But I guess it's about Hank, who is pursued by the twins. Well, right now, yeah, he is being pursued by the twins. They're going after him to kill him instead of Walt. Uh, Walt has started working at the lab with Gail. I'm just leaving it like this so the, the TV doesn't shut, because it stops when I don't Yes, I know. It. But so, oh, you want me to rate it good? <laughs> no. Okay. So yeah, uh, Walt has started working with Gail at the lab. They have a connection. It works great. He yes. loves them. Gail is a friend. Yes. Like, like he... I remember. I remember like if it was an hour ago. It was five <laughs> minutes ago. <laughs> but it was a. Um... Uh, just in the scene uh, that they were that they're making meth in the lab, like I had a song, you got a friend in me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly what they are doing. They are becoming friends, and they are uh, they are completing each other. Completing each other. Yeah. And at the same time, Hank was tagging Jesse. He basically led him right to the RV. Walt was inside. They had to do something to send him away, and what they did was have Saul call, well, have his secretary call to say that Marie was in the hospital. So he left in a yeah. panic, and now he's and, mad. And they, were, they weren't quite uh, happy about this. No. It, I mean, it's, it's mean, you know? It's, mm. Don't do that to someone. And Hank is mad. You saw his eyes. Like, he's pissed. And uh, the RV is no more. So... No, nope, everything's clean. They don't have any... <laughs> The, 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 hey, I have no clues at all about Walter and Jesse. It's a Jesse track. doesn't have a lab anymore. No, so he's gonna make meth again in his house, maybe? Maybe. So I say we jump in this episode and see what happens. Okay. Let's go. One minute. You got nothing on me, yo. All right, you can call my lawyer, Saul Goodman. And you hear me? I got nothing to say. I told you, you can call my- Christ! You got my cell phone number! You ain't my wife's name! How'd you do it? Talk! Who you want to with? Game over, man. That one. Game over with your job. Game over with everything. You don't do this shit! You need a break. He's gonna be a... Uh, he could have killed him! <laughs> He's gonna be a uh, rest... Uh, Forced to take a break, yeah. There he is. <laughs> well, he's a lawyer, he needs proof, you know? Yo, yeah. Adrian. Rocky called, he wants his face back. <laughs> well, Tomorrow, yeah! It looks you bad. That? That's your get out of jail free card. The DEA's worst nightmare is that face out in public. Oh, dad, Walter, and his dad is not there. His family is not there, but Walter is here. He might also be here to see if he's going to press charges because it's Hank who beat him up. Yeah. Meh. Oh, my God. You're now officially the cute one of the group, Paul. <laughs> Ringo, Paul. <laughs> Jesse, I, I am so what? sorry for this. Uh, this should not have happened. But it did. Things see you. What? Uh, what happens now? What happens now? Your scumbag brother-in-law is finished. Done. Every cent he earns, every cent his wife earns, is mine. And He'll see me when he wakes up in the morning, and when he crawls makeup. to sleep in whatever rat hell is left. <laughs> After I shred his house down. Uh, my advice? <laughs> That's probably not a good strategy. I mean, they're scared of you right now. They, they want nothing to do with you. But if you hit them, they're forced to hit back hard. And I think what Saul is saying makes a lot of sense. Jesse, move on with your life. Leave it behind, all of it. Nothing changes. 
Once I walk out of here, I get myself a new RV and go start cooking again. How exactly do you think you're going to get away with that? They will catch you. If the cops catch me, I give them what they want the most. I mean... You. <laughs> See, he hasn't forgotten about the your I'm, a, I'm in your out thing. You're my free pass. <laughs> bitch. <laughs> Can't wait this fucking bitch. Oh, this time he meant it. He's Here's pissed. Sure. Look. Mr. Pinkman is pressing charges in this matter. He's given a detailed version of events as he sees them. The word of a meth head. We know all about his history. We're well aware, but toxicology on Pinkman. His he's blood seen. is clean. He's not using. His word against him. Go from here. Oh, he's done. Go like, he knows it. No, this was definitely one of these uh, blowing up times that uh, we've been talking about. Yes. Not working. Oh. Oh, finally! I feel so bad for him. He's being tough with others, but at least he opened up to Marie a little bit. Yeah. It's a life degenerate versus you. Doing the job you're supposed to. It wasn't the job he was supposed to. Why should you be the one who pays for doing the right thing? Oh, baby, it wasn't the right thing. It's not what the job is. Supposed to be better than that. I've been a bad guy. Unraveling, you know. I don't sleep at night anymore. I freeze. I'm just not the man I thought I was. You're not a god. I think I'm done as a cop. You did a lot of years. That was a great, great speech. I need a new lab assistant. I already did my time. I got my own thing going on. Mm -hmm. A nice try is even your ass had brother-in-law. There's more. And it's more than an assistant. Partners. 50-50. We'll be partners again. It's like the speech from Split season one. 50-50, just like before. 1.5 million dollars each. Money, money, money. So it speaks louder no. than everything else. It's that or you die. I don't think you heard. I heard you fine. I said no. You're turning down one and a half million dollars. I am not turning down the money. I am turning down you. You get it? Ever since I met you, everything I have ever cared about is gone. Ruined, turned to shit. Dead ever since I hooked up with the great Heisenberg. I have nothing. No one. All right, it's all gone. Get it. You don't give a shit about me. You said I was no good. I'm nothing. Why would you want me, huh? You said my math is inferior, right? Right? Hey, you said my cook was garbage! Screw you! Oh. It's the pursuit Your of math is good, Jesse. in these two men. As good as mine. No fucking 
great wonder these two guys won Emmys the entire run of the show. Oh, it was so good! And he did say it! Maybe he doesn't mean it, but maybe, we don't know. Do you think he meant it? His meth is good as, as, as Walter's, as good as Walter's. That's what he said. Yes. That's a lot. But his pride talked. I think he heard him though. Like no matter what his further motive is, I think he heard him. That was a what a hell of a speech. Yeah. 50-50. Yes, 50-50. Okay. Just because he said that he, he his meth was good, has his meth. Gosh, he's he's a addicted to praise and and love and you know a support acknowledgement. Yeah. As of this moment, you're suspended without pay. I have to ask you to hand over your badge and your gun. Yes, sir. He's making the good steps. He's a good person. Of course he's a good person. And he owns up to the mistakes he did, so that's Bam. Cool. He's a good person. He just he beat him up. He just, he just beat up. Because he's Jesse. got because he's got anger issues, but he faces them and he knows what he did, so he's doing the right thing. He's a man. He's not a good man, but he's a man. I just wanted to tell you something. To be clear, you a good man would have faces his feelings. You get your hopes up with the word in the pipeline is Pinkman is impressing charges. Who the hell knows? Do you think it's for Hank and for his protection, his safety, that Walter took back Jesse? We'll talk about this later. Because <laughs> now we need to focus on stuff. Yeah. Her fault? For Mary? Yeah, just, yeah. I don't know, baby. I just think... I think we may be okay. Yeah. Okay. I love you too. No, a ray of light. No, no, no. Shredder. I need you to listen very carefully. Two men are coming to kill you. Okay. They're approaching your car. You have one minute. One minute. Hey, I don't get the gag, Jag off. Who is this? They're coming. Hello? <sighs> I'm having chills. It's the number of the episode too, by the way. One minute? No, no, no the number of the episode. Season okay. three episode. <laughs> what do you do? What do you do? <laughs> you run back to the DEA. He's not at the, he's at the store. It's not the DEA. Run. They're here. What do you want me to do? If he leaves now, he might never get a chance to actually stop this. Because he got a warning. He might not get a warning next time. Bulletproof vest. Oh, no, thank
you. Ow. <laughs> He's been shot th three times, three, four times. <laughs> 50 cents has to enough bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, the one minute episode. <laughs> one minute episode. No, no, but the one minute referred to the <laughs> time he got and yeah. Uh, there's a lot of, of reactions possible for this scene. I do remember myself and my sister also freaking out over the fucking goat and, you know, run, run. But then, you know, people have a point in the comments and people talked about this online. He got one chance here because someone warned him. If he yep. went away... He was prepared. Well, he was prepared. Yeah, exactly. If he went away, he, he might not get that chance anymore. And then who's to say they won't show up at his house, kill Marie too, you know? Like, he doesn't know... Yeah. So him not going away might have been the smartest thing he did. He faced him like a fucking badass. Him against the two twins, he did of it. Of course, he killed the whole family. <laughs> well, not the uncle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he killed Tuco, he killed the twins. That was badass. Oh, but that was stressful, right? <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> Hank. Let's talk about Hank. I yes. made a lot of comments about the, the character uh, in this episode. Like I'm saying that he's a good man. He's a good man. What is a good man? He made mistakes. That's a good man too. Well, of course. Like I, a good man can break at one point. You know, when you push someone too far, someone can break and lose it. But a bad man, a bad man to me would have been someone that would have gone after lie. Jesse without yeah. reason. Yeah. But he had a reason. He, you know, someone lied to him about Marie, and you know, someone kept playing him like you. He yeah. was he was stupid. I think he just lost it. No, if he if if he would have lied, if he would have made a scheme about why he killed Jesse or that that was a that would have been just crook. You know, he just faces the consequences consequences of his action. Yeah. And that's I praise him for that. It's 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 good. There's no good man. There's no bad people. There's just good choices and bad choices. He made bad choices uh, well, in, I, the, I would in, argue, in the end of season I would season argue two. that, though, but, you know, no. I mean, bad people exist. Like, there are bad people. Hello. Someone, everyone has a reason, though. You know, everyone has a reason because every bad thing starts somewhere, but I would argue that there are I'm bad people. I'm not a moral <laughs> person. I'm more like an ethical person. And some things are acceptable and some are unacceptable. The thing is, the good and bad is just moral. It's you, just what you are told to be. Would you good argue? And what, would you argue that Eisenberg, Walter White, is a good person? He's a person. I can argue that Jesse is a good person. A good person pretending to be bad. But I don't, and I think that Walter is a bad person pretending to be good. No. I. Uh, you. I mean. That's how Jesse I see could it. have done a lot of things before doing meth. He, did, he wasn't definitely. But Walter was pushed to be, do that. But for because some of people, his cancer or anything, Jesse for, just went into it. it yeah, was, but why? That's the thing. The the why is important. With Walter, the why doesn't matter because he got an out. He I, he had no. A, his vision of what is wrong for him is for you. It's bad. The choices that he made. Well, it is bad. I mean, it's he killed people. He it's killed a, people. <laughs> It's a perception that killing is bad. No, no, I'm pushing it forward. I'm pushing beyond the point. Yeah, because, I mean, let's not argue here that killing people is, I mean, killing people is bad unless, like, I mean, yes, you can argue. Yes, case we by decide case. as a society that it's bad to kill people. It is bad to kill people. Um, <laughs> I see what you're doing here, but, oh, okay, for the sake of arguing. No, but what I'm talking about, Hank and Hank Everyone making, has a chance and to... Hank in this episode was making the good choices. Like, he was facing his consequ the, consequ the consequences of his action. I'll, I'll, I'll was... spin it in a way that you'll, you'll agree. No one is born bad. No one is born bad, but through experiences and choices, some people choose the bad path. What? You know? So, and yeah, yeah. Bor Walter bad. wasn't born bad, Hank wasn't born bad, no. Jesse wasn't born bad, I they made agree. their own choices. But I, I agree with the things you do, but saying that they do the bad things, for them it's natural, for the twins it's natural to just shoot people. Like, well, the everyone only is the thing hero. that matters is the family. Everyone is the hero of their own story. Yes, so for them, it, they made the good choices. 
again, I would argue, like, what if you torture someone for the sake of torturing someone because you think it's fun? Like, but this, this, this is, is the rape. Yeah. No, this is the cheating argument all over again. We'll talk about this for ten minutes without actually no, this having this is answer. mental health. This is an, a, 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 an antisocial behavior. This is killing people for killing people is just egg, 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 selfish. But for them, it's for them. They they are not making bad choices. You will see someone making bad choices and be dealing with it that they made the wrong choices when uh, their moral compass is freaking out. And yeah. you will see in their behavior and their character. But uh, the people you talk about killing people just for killing people are people with... They are not meant to learn about good or bad. Well, we'll see but no, I, uh, it's a good... Uh, it's a good speech of uh, philosophy that we're yeah, doing you're right trying, now. You're, you're pushing it a, a little bit. A yes, little bit. But what I want to talk Frank about... Frank is not a bad person, but he made a mistake and he... He owned up I don't it. even want to talk about how is he a good person or a bad person. He's just making the good choices and making the good thing to just accept the uh, what he made. He went to Jesse at the beginning of the episode. He, he beat him up, not to death, but to he, make he him... He could have killed him. Pretty ugly. If it wasn't a TV show, he could definitely have killed him because one punch to the head can be enough to kill someone. One good punch in the nose and you can just blow his head up. Hell, just here. In the temp. That could be enough. Yes, yes. So uh, it's not. So right now he's doing the good thing to just go and face the thing he yeah. did. He opened up. He, he definitely opened up this episode. He opened up a little bit. It was. Uh, a little bit? No, he completely was opened up. Teeny tiny. No, no, no. But he opened up. You were oh, talking no, no. a lot during the speech to Marie, but he said everything. And he. he, he it's not just no, about Alfonso. I mean, oh, no, yes, he opened up in the in, on the bed. I just mean yeah. with his emotion. Okay, just, no, well. Just in the elev elevator when yeah, he you just let cried, he let stuff. out a teeny tiny bit. But after he opened up quite a face his action. But there is a lot about the construction of his feelings that we need to push a little bit. Not, I don't want to see it, but maybe with a... <laughs> in real life, with a psychologist, you can just talk about your feelings and how you are dealing with it and just... Pushing through the, the admitted, process you yeah. made. He admitted that he had a problem. He admitted that something was not right. Is what was not right. He said, and, and he said everything. You know, he said that it started with Tuco Salamanca, not El Paso. Ever since he killed Tuco, he's been having PTSD, and he's been, like he said, unraveling. So yeah. that's the first step. After that, what he needs to do is figure out a way to deal with this toxic masculinity in uh. a healthy way. Ask for help. Be vulnerable. We'll see. We'll see Show how that develops. Weaknesses. If he's it's alive, we don't, if he's alive, we don't even know. He's been shot a lot. It's not even weaknesses. It's like just man up. You don't. You're tough. You're strong. You don't have weaknesses. But you don't. You're not having weaknesses. You're just bearing the fact that you just saw people blow up in El Paso. That's the stuff. You need to. You need to realize that it's human, and you're having a problem with something. But he needs to need rewire his calling brain. Calling <laughs> for aid, calling for people to just help you is not a weakness. Mm -hmm. It's a show of strength. And, strength people need, yeah. and men, in general, need to realize that. Yeah, I a, just had a formation with a, a, help, a guy, a, a call helpline, with a yeah. hotline about suicide. That we say when a, a man call, you need to act fast and you need to act ready because the people are at their last hope. It, you, are, you are the last people sometimes that they would talk to mm -hmm. because 80% of suicides of men is, is, is finished. Like it's going to take it's a completed. lot for them. It's going to take a lot for them to even call someone for help. So for yes. them to call is a good thing. Because you need to be a man. You need to take off uh, the problems. You need to have the solution. You need to provide. It's everything that maybe Walter is. So some people are and having a problem be. with that. Like Hank, we are having problem with that because he is facing... He just faced death. You, you face death. You need to talk about this. It's normal to talk about this. It's not a weakness. It's not showing flaws. 
both Hank and Walter went through this. They they faced death and handled it in a very different way. Yes. For the guy who pretended to be strong and ended up losing it, overseeing death, he feels like he's weak. He feels like he doesn't, you know, uh, he doesn't want to call for help and he doesn't know how to react because he's never felt like this before and he doesn't understand why he's like this. And for the guy who was seen as weak, ended up finding strength in the act of killing. You know, at first it bothered him, but Walter found that he was at ease and at peace in this world that's asking of him to be strong and, and ruthless. So, I don't know. I mean, it's a very interesting way to see both sides and they both do the wrong thing when it comes to, you know, dealing with the feelings of, of, of killing someone and, you know, the, the hurt, the guilt, the trauma that comes with it. Hank is definitely going through some shit right now, so we'll see how that develops. And Walter, I think he's just accepted that this is the path he's chosen. I, that was maybe, in my opinion, the last uh, push he needed with Gus, going to the criminal side and deciding yeah. that this was the world he wanted. So he's dealt with it and he, he was stronger for it. Whereas Hank chose to bury he can it. Provide. Like yeah. he provides to everything on the divorce paper. Well, he's at E, you know, that's the thing. He loves to be in that world, even though he says something else, you know, when he's pretending that, oh no, I'm not a criminal. He's at ease in this world. Hank was surprisingly, you know, he was surprised to find out that he was not at ease at his job. You know, he's not good at his job yeah. in this way. And it's fine, you know, a lot of, a lot of cops go through this. He realized that he can do better. Like when he said he, you, he could have done better in his job. He, but like, he handled it poorly. Yes. Yeah, because he didn't understand what was going on with him. He even said it to Marie, you know, he was explaining He's his symptoms. He's supposed to do better. Yes, but he was explaining his symptoms and everything. And he, he didn't say, you know, I had a panic attack. Uh, he no. was just like, I fr I'm frozen up, you know, I'm freezing up. I'm, He's not I'm used shaking. to the language. Yeah, that's the thing. He doesn't understand what's going on, but maybe... Now that it's out in the open, and now that, I mean, that's not, that's speculations because I'm not telling you if he's alive next episode, but, or what's going to happen. So. I do hope so, too. I don't want him to die. Me neither. I don't, I don't want anyone on the show to die. Oh, man, you're not no. watching the good show now. Well, you're I'm not, not watching the right show for that. No, I'm watching the right show. Yeah, okay. If you want to have my reacts, you're going to have my reacts <laughs> to someone who died. Oh, but but of course, that I don't want the twins to die. I don't want them to be... Rehabilitate. <laughs> and, but okay, I, I was against you a lot about the whole, you know, bad guy and stuff, but it's true that we saw the twins as kids. That's something that's very interesting in the TV show that talks about bad people is that everyone started somewhere. No one is born bad. We got the twins as kids. We see them having fun. And then we see how the uncle treated them, how he taught them, you know, the way he taught them that finally mattered. There's better ways to, to teach your kids that. Uh, but he's ruthless, Just so no speech. wonder, you know, and then you see the, the kids turn into the adults and you're like, no wonder they turn into that if that's the way they were raised. Of course. Uh, we just, we had the same speech when we talked about Tuco. When we saw the, the uncle, I, uh, I do believe it was you, who said, uh, uh, like, uh, uh, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Like, maybe it's a family thing and uh, the uncle mustn't be that great with uh, the, the children. It starts somewhere, you yes, know? Yes, it's a family thing. It, it's true that, you know, I, one example I have it's is if you've, heard, if, you've, if you've heard your entire life that the sky was green and someone came up to you and said the sky is blue, you'd be thinking that person is crazy, you know? Yeah. You, you can't change someone's entire childhood and, and, and lessons and teachings like that. The behavior and the, the actions of the twins, for you it's bad, for me it's unacceptable, but for them it's good, it, it's normal. It's what, it's what they know. It's what they know. It's what they do. They know best. You think so now? Oh uh, well, the twins have been dealt with. I cannot say I'm not glad that they're they're done. You know that they're, they they got taken. But I don't know if the other one is dead. I don't know. One was shot in the head, so he's gone. Yeah, this one is quite gone. <laughs> we'll see next episode, I guess. But, but the other one may be tetraplegic. <laughs> Inside joke, sorry. Uh, well, uh, in a wheelchair. I don't know how to say it. Maybe. Paraplegic. Maybe, yeah, yeah, in, in a wheelchair. Handicap. Monkey. Paralyzed or something. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. Maybe next episode. Uh, but yeah, that's dealt with. I did that. Uh, by the way, like I have to say, this 
I forgot that in this episode we had so many great speeches, but both from uh, Dean Norris and Aaron Paul, who play uh, Hank and, and Jesse, both of them killed it in this episode. The with speech their speeches. They gave. Oh, yeah. They yeah. were so. The speech good. at the hospital, the speech in, on the bed. Um, well, both speeches at the hospital. You know, when yeah, he first we, said. Because he, Jesse. That's at that the first, first speech is he's so dumb. At first he was angry, at the other one he was sad. Oh yeah. There are so many emotions in that kid and he's just letting them all out. And it's so sad. It has nothing to lose. I know. Well he's that's the thing. Them out. That's not true. He's got one thing to lose, and that's Walt's support, and he gave him just that. And that's the thing. I could argue that Walt pushed the right button, but I'm not even sure he understands what he's doing to that kid. No. I, I think he knows perfectly how to manipulate Jesse, he's, but there's a part of me that wants to say that it was genuine. But at the same time, I don't think he believes that Jesse's meth is just as good as his. I think in that moment, and that you, were, you wanted to talk about this, but yeah, Skylar went to Walt and said, you need to deal with this. You need to make sure, call Jesse, do something, make sure he doesn't go after Hank. And right after that, he started looking for ways to get Gail out, out of the lab. Gail was perfect. Gail was amazing. And I don't think Walter wanted to have him gone. I remember in my first reaction, I argued that maybe deep down, he does want Jesse back. You know, maybe there's a bit of him that's like, he doesn't, he loves Gail, but he fits better with Jesse. But watching it again, I'm like, no, it's definitely, he wants Gail but he needs to go back with Jesse because of Hank. Yeah. So I think that's the entire reason why he did this. You now, think? how he did it though, I think he didn't care about Jesse till he got to that room and Jesse gave him that last speech with all the tears, with the emotions, saying the truth. You don't give a shit about me. You don't care. Yeah. And I think it, it got to Walter. Like Walter heard that and he felt bad about it. I think, you know, sometimes you forget how much you care about people, you will no. treat some, you know, you'll because have Walt friends and you'll treat them a certain way and you'll forget that they're human and sometimes it can hurt people. Walter in, in this season was quite selfish against Jesse. Mm -hmm. Like he doesn't care at all about his feelings and now he's dealing with the things he's made. He, he just, I know people are arguing in the comments, but Walter let Jane die. So yeah. everything happens because of you. If you hadn't pushed Jesse, she, she, would have, she wouldn't have hold it at this moment. Maybe she would have later, but it, well, it, right now, it's your fault. Oh, he, def he definitely, I'm telling you, he definitely still has guilt. Sorry, my computer. He definitely has guilt about Jane. It's still, it's always there at the back of his mind. That's, that's confirmed. I'm telling you. Yeah. He's never going to forget that. Kind of like he never forgets about Crazy 8 either. You know, he still cuts the crust. It's the late. Crust? It's late. He still cuts the crust of his sandwiches. We. Oui. Which is something that's related to Crazy Eight. He never always. forgets. Uh, always. He does. He always does that. And they take the time to show us that he does that too. He never forgets. That's the part of Crazy Eight that he kept with him. And he's also got a part of Jane that he keeps with him. He's never going to forget the people he killed. When it comes to Jesse, like you said, this season, I think he got too used to the idea that Jesse was going to be around, you know, that Jesse was always going to be around. He was always going to be, you know, following him and yeah. listening to him. And then Jesse just got done because he got beat up. That could have been really bad. He got done, especially after Walt said, I'm, I'm cutting you out. It's over. And then he had the idea to treat Hank like this. And Jesse's the one who got beat up. He got, it was, he was so done. So saying all of this shit to Walter was Jesse's, you know, Jesse finally standing up for himself. But then Walter, I think the way he acted, you know, the way he, he listened to this and the way his face was, I think he heard him. I yeah. don't think he manipulated him. He was as sad. Much. He was yeah. sad in his speech. Because every time, like you said, he, he just thought that Jesse would follow him any anytime. Mm -hmm. And you treated him like you treated him like shit. Just like for a lot of episodes. So and he was surprised that his anger was real and pointed at him. Yeah. And he deserved it, really. So he lied to, to, to you know, make him feel proud a little bit. Because I don't... He doesn't no, think... I think it was... Mm, I think a little bit was genuine. Because when, at first, he saw the, the myth that Jesse made... It was cloudy. Took over. It was cloudy. 
It wasn't perfect. <coughs> I, I don't think Walt, Walt is too prideful to ever think that Jesse's meth is as good as his. I think, but I, I think he genuinely thought that Jesse did a good job and he wanted to tell him to, he wanted him to feel good about it. Maybe it's a bit manipulation, you know, manipulating him so he's, you know, fine and, and, and willing to maybe work with him. But then he left, you know, he, he wasn't expecting anything. So I think that him saying, your meth is just as good as mine, it's a, I think he was selfless in that scene, you know, yep. for, for once, he chose to forget about his But pride. I don't think that he died. Well, well, he was not as, maybe not as good, but I might. Not, at because moment, you have a lot sad. of hopes. You have a lot of hopes for Jesse's math to be as good as Walt's. But I'm telling you that right now, Walter doesn't think, and I think Walter is never going to think that Jesse's math is just as good as his. I don't know. Mm, now, I thought that at the moment, he complimented him. I'm not sure that it was all just like. It's maybe, almost like... Maybe he thought that... It, no! Maybe he thought that at some point, maybe your math will be good as mine. That's not what he said. You, maybe his, man, his math was near his perfection. It was... It's, his math, the, math, the math that he made was way better than the, at the first time. You see, he's learning. Let's take this, the, the same speech, but twist it around just a little bit. In English, you know, when you say that something is, is good, doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, it's to the same quality level. It can also be worth it, you know. If if uh, Walter's meth is good enough for their business and he says that Jesse's meth is good enough, just as good as his, doesn't necessarily mean that it's to the same level, but could mean that Jesse is good enough to be on the same level as Eisenberg, you know, that he could yeah. work with him as a partner. So we can take a product it this is way. quality. Yeah, so not necessarily same purity level, same uh, quality, but Jesse is good enough to be considered a to, partner to Walter yes, White. To so be, he could have meant on, it this to way. To keep working with him. He could have meant it this way. I think it was a selfless act to make him feel better. And then yep. Jesse Finally. being the kid that he is that deserved that wants that pat on the back called him back it's like an addict you want to have his pride like you said you want to be acknowledged by walter but is you want to be prideful there's a reason you want to be fierce there's a reason why right after he called him he looked at the chart and he looked at the worst of, of the bunch he feels bad i think he knows deep down that going back to walter is just gonna make him suffer more but he needs to go back because he's like an addict, you know, when it comes to feelings and, you know, he knows that if he goes back... Why do you think the drug addicts keep doing drugs? That's they the want be, They want to feel happy. It's still the, the seeking of pride. He's of hurting being... himself in the hopes that he will get more of this. Everyone wants to be proud in this show. Even Skylar, mm -hmm. even Mary, she wants to be proudful. That's why she's always wearing purple. Hank want to be proud of his job. Walter want to be proud to provide to his family. Jesse wants someone to be proud of him, though. Yes, but it's I will be proud of myself if some if someone can he be will feel proud of me. He will feel acknowledged and deserved, maybe because his parents always always told him that he wasn't good enough. Always, nope. you know, pushed him away and stuff. I think he that's what he needs. He needs someone he to tell him, him that he's enough. He's, he can be accepted by someone. Yeah, and that's when he will be proud of himself when he can when someone would be proud of him. That's a more complex character, but it's all about pride. That's why I love Jesse, you know? That's, he's but I said person. about every character, but if you want to keep focusing on I Jesse... Think, I think Jesse hits my heartstrings a little bit more than others, but... Uh, it's more... And there's so much miserable. rawness in his, in his acting, too. You know, Aaron Paul as an actor, there's... I think Walter White, Brian Cranston, is very subtle in his way, in, in his acting. You know, the looks he does, you know, the change, the changes in his face. But Aaron Paul is all emotions and rawness. So it's easier to feel bad for him and to, you know, feel, feel you know, empathy when it comes to Jesse. But the, the, the actor is thinking. quite good. Yeah, yeah. But also the uh, Jesse is more, the more, not miserable, but pitiful. Not in the wrong way. He's the way. kid. He's a kid. He's a kid. He's just, he's, a, he's the one who can touch People's hearts. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's a, yeah, he's dreamy. <laughs> More than Walter, on va se dire. Definitely. 
Definitely. You do feel bad for Walter sometimes, but then the stuff he does don't make you feel pity for him as much, you know, because you know, you know he deserves it. When it comes to Jesse, though, it's always others that do stuff and then he pays the consequences. So maybe that's why we pity him more. But in any case, so he's going to go back. Uh, his face is messed up. But uh, he's gonna go back even though it's gonna hurt him. <laughs> he's gonna go back even if his face is messed up. Oh, his face is he messed up. That's where he hospital. is right now. He's not gonna go after Hank. Uh, Hank is gonna deal with the consequences of what happened. He's, and... Hank is got a guardian angel. And sadly, Gail is gone. But who made the call? Who do you think made the Gus? call? Gus? Yeah. He's the only one who knew. But he knew about the one minute? He get I, I don't know how he knew maybe Mike was tagging you know was tailing the the two brothers, but uh, maybe he knew that Hank could protect himself. I would well, give them any chance. Well, Gus is Gus is a criminal, but he's also a businessman and he's the one that sent these two after a cop you know a a DA agent who was doing his a job. A DA agent. Yeah, yeah, who's doing his job. So I think that because of that, like he's not feeling guilty about this, but he's at least gonna give Hank a warning mm -hmm. call. Because he's the one that sent them after him. And do you think... <laughs> I watched too much Game of Thrones. <laughs> and maybe he's having a plan to send the twins to the cup. That if they fall, they will be linked to the mafia, uh, the, 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 the Mexican mafia. And the plan is to make crumble everything, the, the, the other one business. Hey, ce serait... Uh, ah, it's okay. gonna be... Uh, a good show, look. <laughs> Everything I'm... All I'm gonna say is this. Gus has a backstory. Gus always has a reason. And and the uncle doesn't like Gus. No, the uncle doesn't like Gus for reasons. They work for the same cartel, so they know each yes. other. Uh, okay, so... They are yeah. doing business, but they Gus don't like each other. Gus has a backstory. Gus never does anything for no reason. There's always <laughs> a plan. That's a bit of a stretch. The reason he sent them after Hank was because if they went after Walter, no, he was going to lose an investment. The first priority was to make All Walter I'm King. saying is that you will find but out more about Gus. why do you make the, the call? That's what I'm talking about. Why uh, do you make the call? You want the cop to maybe kill them. He did, maybe he's saying, like, the job will be done. Maybe I want to get rid of them. They are dangerous. Maybe. They Maybe. are they, they are a threat you've to had Gus. This episode and last episode, you've had theories that were very wrong and theories that were so right. I looked at the camera and I was like, holy shit! Like, how did you th get there? It's just psy psychological. No, I know, I know. But I'm just saying, I'm not saying which theory because you had multiple, but you, <laughs> you hit the, the nail, you know, on the head on certain points and then you were completely wrong about others. So that didn't happen yet. That didn't happen yet. Some stuff is gonna happen that you guessed already. <laughs> Just at the like... beginning, I'm like, called it, <laughs> called it. But called you'll see, it. like, like I said, sometimes you're wrong. Like you've you've had wrong guesses before, and you've had some now. But you also had really great guesses. So I'm excited for you to figure out if it was true or not. Uh, one thing is for sure, I'm excited for you to see how everything is going to unfollow after this because this is definitely a game changer. And now we've got both Jesse and Walt that are going to work for Gus. That's a huge thing. Yeah. So, yeah, I say we're ready the for next episode. The team is back together. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so anything else? No, I think that's it for this episode. So we'll move on. Thank you guys so much for watching this with us. If you want to see the next episode right away, it is on Patreon already. You can check it out if you want. The link is in the description. Or you can subscribe to, the, to our YouTube channel and wait for next week's episode. Yes. Bye. Bye.